Do you want to know what the best hiking maps are for Switzerland? And keep watching. I will present you two hiking maps, different ones. The one is the one from Wonderland, Swiss Mobility. There are those who do the national routes for hiking and for bicycling, the slow routes, like international routes. So to get to that map, you go to map.wanderland.ch and here on the languages, you can change it to English. Usually it's uh, in German. You could also do it in French or Italian. Then here, you want to click on hiking in Switzerland to get the hiking map. Here, it's a, there is also a map for bicycling, riding the bicycle, then mountain biking, skating, and canoeing in Switzerland. You can also add rail bus and boat stops if you want to. And some other, you can also add some nature like preservations, natural, national reservoirs. So then you can scroll into wherever you want. If you have the, the national routes, as if, if you go out again, you see the national routes. For example, the number one is the Via Alpina, you might already heard of, one of the really famous one. You see a lot of 4,000 mountains, or the Jura Height Path, which is number five, this, or the seven, which is the Via Gotardo, which goes from Basel to uh, Chiasso to get to Italy. Or the number six is, I heard, one of the hardest ones who goes over the Alps, a lot of height meters, and so on. If you zoom in, say for example in the Appenzellerland, then you start seeing other routes. The yellow ones are the easy ones. Those you can do with more or less normal shoes. Then the red ones are a little bit harder. Those are the mountain hiking paths. There you need good shoes and you should have some uh, idea of mountains, especially if you go by yourself. And then there are the blue routes. Also, those are T4 to T6. There are two, T1 to T6. T6, T1 is the easiest one and are the yellow ones, T2 and T3 are harder, they're the red ones. And then there is the Alpine mountain paths, which are the hardest ones, T4 to T6. Usually T4s are marked, while uh, T5 and T6 usually aren't marked anymore and you really need a map to even find it. You have to be able to read maps. Those ones you need really good shoes and you shouldn't do by yourself. Maybe T4 if you're really, really used and you know what you're doing, you might be able to do one yourself, but usually it's not a good idea. Sometimes you have to go over glaciers and so, which can be dangerous if you go alone. Then what's also good on the path, as on the map, is you see the hike lines. So for example, here is the line which marks the 1,700 meters over sea level. Here's the 1,600 and then you can go here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you see there are 10 between those. So every one of here marks 10 meters. So here we have 1610, 1620, and so on, till we get to 1700. And the 100 meter marks are a little bit stronger than the other ones, like here. Then we also get the height of the, the mountains, some topics, it writes down and also in the bottom, not just mountains, you have points where you can adjust your, uh, your devices for height. Then we also see here if it's forest or if it's uh, more like stones. We see the seas with their height. And so the height are really useful because we can then See, does it go more or less uh, alongside? Does it go like steep up? It helps us to get an idea how steep the path is. Then we can also click on some, not all have information. See if this one is information here, we see no further information, but for example, if we go to this one, sometimes it's a while to lo loading, we get 
the path on the 988. Here the numbers, if you just have one number, it's a national root. If there are two numbers, it's a regional root. And if you have three signs, then it's a local root. Here it's the geological hiking path in the Alpstein, who goes from uh, Hohenkassen to Brilisau, or the other way around. For example, one I made last summer for a friend. And what's also really useful are those ones. That means if sometimes you cannot pass them for some reason, you have to make reconstruction, something came down, they didn't reveal it yet, then they're usually marked on that map. So you know that you're not able to do this. So at the moment, it's not possible to get up to one custom by foot on hiking paths, because this one is closed for whatever reason. Sometimes they also have information, and it just shows right now what it is, but yeah, they're in whole Switzerland, there are different paths like here, is, some are closed, and so on. Hiking paths are made for the summer or for the springs. If they're open, it doesn't mean that, they're, that you can take them in the winter. They're not marked here as closed in the winter or in the summer, just if they're really not passable or they usually also right there, it's not closed. Often you get another way where you can go and they can have different reasons. Like here also some who are closed. Now besides the Switzerland mobility map, there is the map of the official map of Switzerland. Just a side note, they also take a lot of information of the official map, they have APIs. That's the official map. The official map of Switzerland has a lot more information than the other one. So we can add information also which are not necessary for hiking. And here can also change, usually it's in German, here I can change it to English. Now with in the geocatalog you can get information about different layers and add them. Like base map, you can for example, we can add journey through time maps to get the really old map. The, the first map in Switzerland was, pr was produced before official Switzerland even started. So Switzerland is a nation since 1848 and they started a couple of years before. Of course they needed a while till they had all, I think 30 years if I remember it correct, above the 30 years, whole Switzerland was on a single map. And just keep in mind, when they produced that map, there were no satellites, there were no airplanes, or anything like that, no drones, so they had to do everything, walking up the mountains by hand and uh, measuring the whole things. And it was, I mean, when you see here, I mean, I'm not sure from which exact year this map is, we can maybe go to the very first one, Let's see if I have it, this one is now from 1864, so we could even change it and say the first one published was in 1844, here was not the whole Switzerland yet. As you will see here, just parts of Switzerland, but that thing was produced in 1844 and it was uh, digitalized later. The Dufour map. You see even here with height lines, of course it wasn't that precise than today yet, but still. So Switzerland is famous for having the best maps of the entire world. Then you can go to besides base maps, their natural environment, here for example geology again to the today's map then we can say we want for example see classification of rocks 500 to get geological information the basic basic information here if you zoom in we see we can also click on it then we see it here it's sedimentary rocks but when you click here on the red one it's crystalline rocks and the yellow one is unconsolidated rocks so you have geology, you also have more detailed one where it, where it tells you precise where it is. So if you're interested in geology and want to figure out what stones there are when you hike, you can go and look here. Then we have, besides geology, and we have of course also natural reservoirs and so on, nature protection, and population economy, and transportation. We have, for example, a hiking map, and we can combine them could say no, we don't want them or we want them. So we see here it goes over, you can even click on it, crystalline rocks. And then when you walk here, you see, ah, up here you see uh, sedimentary rocks and so on. There is public transportation stop, which you can add and a lot more. 
both maps are for free. Hope this video was useful. Uh, if it was, please give it a thumb up and uh, tell me in the comments if you find them useful and if you have other tips and tricks. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to not forget any of the future videos. See you soon.